In this video, we're going to talk about cost of goods sold. In particular, how to compute cost of goods sold for a manufacturing firm. And the reason that cost of goods sold will be different uh, for a manufacturing firm than calculating it for, let's say, a retailer, is if we think about something like, let, let's say, a toy store, and the toy store buys a doll and then resells the doll, right? So when that, when that toy store buys that doll, let's say the doll costs $5, and then the selling price is seven dollars. So if you think about the income statement effect, you just got revenue of seven dollars, and then what's the cost of the doll? The cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold is just the five dollars, right? So we can think about that. That's intuitive. But a manufacturing firm, we actually built the doll, right? We're actually thinking about well, what materials went into this doll? How much labor went into the doll? There's overhead, there's all, there's all these different things that go into the doll. It's, it's not as easy, it's not as simple just saying, okay, well, what did it cost to, to buy this doll? And so it's a little bit more complicated to, to compute cost of goods sold for a manufacturing firm. But the equation itself is quite simple. Cost of goods sold uh, is basically equal to the, the beginning finished goods inventory. So let's say that it was January 1, the inventory, and then we add in the cost of goods manufactured, which if you don't know how to compute cost of goods manufactured, see the previous video. And then we subtract out the ending finished goods inventory. So again, we can think about this. We can think about this as, as we've got this beginning good, uh, finished goods inventory. Let's say it's this pile here. And then we add in this cost of goods manufactured. And so that makes our pile larger. But now we've got, we look at the end of the year, we say, well, we've got, we've still got some stuff on the shelf. We've got this, this ending finished goods that we haven't sold yet. And so what we do is, is we kind of ignore the ending finished goods. So we deduct those, we subtract those out. And then the remainder of this pile, that's the stuff that went out the door. This is the cost of goods sold. So Provided we know cost of goods manufactured, we've already done most of the hard work in terms of figuring out about materials used and labor and, and overhead. So <clears throat> if we take a look at an example firm, we can just say that we look at the balance sheet from the, uh, the end of the previous year and say what was the finished goods inventory balance. And let's say that it was $120. And then we look at the balance sheet of this year and say, okay, as of December 31st, what, what, what do we have in finished goods? This is our ending inventory. So we say that's $80. And then we've already co co done the schedule of cost of goods manufactured. And so we know the cost of goods manufactured is 700. Now we just follow this, this simple formula. So we say, okay, what's the, the beginning finished goods? Well, the beginning finished goods, we've got 120. And now we add in the cost of goods manufactured, that's 700. And then we subtract out what we're left with, which is the $80 that is in finished goods at the, end, at the end of the year. And then that gives us our cost of goods sold. And so the cost of goods sold, this, this comes out, let's see, this comes out to $740.